Thanks, Doug. Good morning, everyone. I'm Gilbert Corsi. I'm the anchor of WDRB News at 4. I'm also a reporter for the station. Um, I was just speaking with our keynote uh, speaker in the back earlier, and I had said that I was raised in the black church, and so you get up there, and the preacher says, I'm not going to be long and then he goes on to preach for an hour. Well, let me tell you, then I am not going to be long, and we're not gonna be opening the doors of the church in an hour, okay? Five minutes or less, I promise. Uh, I have a unique perspective on teen violence and youth violence as a, as, a, as a journalist, because we see it in its rawest and most emotional form. Uh, it almost reminds me of Groundhog's Day. Uh, raise your hand, interactive here. If you see the movie Groundhog's Day, Raise your hand, maybe. Yes? Okay, good, good, good. You know the premise. Came out in the early 90s, uh, stars Bill Murray, and he is a broadcaster, specifically a weatherman, who is reliving the same day over and over and over and over again. And I'm not speaking on behalf of WDRB, I'm speaking on behalf of Gilbert Corsi, a journalist who's been doing this for eight years in four different states. Teen violence is our Groundhog Day. We're telling these stories over and over and over again. I know everybody's got the attention of the last two weeks or what happened last weekend at Waterfront Park, but we can look at Louisville and say that it actually goes far beyond that. It was less than six months ago when a young man was standing out near the bus stop at 18th and Broadway and was shot and fell dead in Esquire Alley behind, behind a gas station. A year before that, a teenager was shot and killed on board a tarp bus over and over and over again. This is our Groundhog's Day. And I can tell you that I am sick of this story. I'm ready to change this headline. Because from my view, there are some constants. And when I talk about those constants, I'm specifically meaning we have the scanners in the newsroom. So we can hear the radio traffic from all our local police agencies and fires. And that means there's a lot of chaos going on through all the static. But there are some key words that always stick out. Dead on arrival is one of them. So we're going to send our news crew out to the scene. And I'm going to talk to my photographer, one of them here who's here covering this event, I'm going to say, it, for the Esquire Alley example, that's a child. Don't shoot his body laying in the street. There's going to be some constants. I know that there's going to be a large amount of people congregating out there, and that's why I talk about we see it in its rawest form. Because when you see the pictures on the news of people sobbing and literally collapsing on the sidewalk, I'm showing that so I don't have to show that young man's body. We have to work in a world of who, what, when, where, and why in news. And so we get out to the scene, and I know the police on the pager are going to tell us how long until they get there. Sometimes we're there before they even have the crime tape up, roping it off. Then when the officer comes to the scene, it's going to be, you know, if it's in Louisville, it'll be, uh, you know, Dwight Mitchell or uh, Alicia Smiley, Carrie Klain, or, or, or Robert Bivin. They're going to come and they're going to give us just a little bit of information. They're going to tell us it's a team or a young adult. They're going to give us an age range, sometime between 16 and, and, and 24. They're going to tell if it's a black male or white male or black female or white female or Hispanic person. I, they're going to give us just a little bit of information. But here's the constant. We don't have a suspect yet. Please call the tip line if you have any answers. 574-LMPD. I can almost write this script without even looking at the paper because the constants remain the same. It's our Groundhog's Day. And here's the unmistakable moment because we have to go figure out who it is and we have to go find, find a picture. I can get a name. There's going to be enough people out there who care about that person to get a name. But then I have to go knock on his last known address. Sometimes that's mom and dad's house. Sometimes that's a cousin's house. Sometimes that's an aunt or uncle. Sometimes that's grandma or grandpa. And I have to knock on the door and I ask, who is this person? Because the tragic ending of their life is not their entire life. And I need to tell the whole story. Who, what, when, where, and why. And so often, that's where the disconnect comes in. 
That story of the young man who fell dead in Esquire Alley after being shot near a bus stop at Broadway. I went to his last known address. It was his grandparents' house. And I specifically went there because I had found him on Twitter. And so that gave me the who, or at least we thought. Because I couldn't find, through 100 pictures on Twitter, one picture that he was in flash and suspect cash, I'm talking hundreds of dollars, throwing up gang signs or showing off his middle finger. And I went to his grandmother's house and I said, I need to know more than the person who's on Twitter. And she didn't know he had a Twitter page. The last thing she knew, the kid who lived in her house, that she told me, he was a straight A student. Well, what's the last picture you have? Eighth grade, middle school. Well, somewhere between eighth grade, 13 and 14 years old, and 17 years old when he lied in Esquire Alley, there was a disconnect. We fell out of contact with this child, and that's how he ended up there. I could give you at least 100 more examples from my time in Louisville, Kentucky, just like this. I'm sick of telling this story because there is always the Groundhog's Day constant, and in the end, it ends so many times the same way. And our media people who are in here and the other reporters who are in here will know about it, and you guys have probably seen it. The family will gather, sometimes Chris 2X will be there, there'll be a balloon release. These kids deserve so much more. These tragic endings, have to stop. We want to tell different stories. People come up to us on the news all the time and say, oh, well, you only talk about the bad that's happening in the community. And I said, no, that's, we have to talk about everything that's happening in a community. And if a teenager is dying in the middle of the street or a teenager is committing a crime, then that is a story that we have to tell. We have to hold our community accountable. We have to hold the people within it accountable. Parents, teachers, juvenile justice, the child himself. Because if you don't spotlight the problem, there is no chance of there being a change. If media was not all over what happened at Waterfront Park last week and acted like it didn't happen, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. In Groundhog's Day, Bill Murray finally was able to break the cycle. And that is the challenge for the people in this room and the vested stakeholders who are trying to address teen violence, is to break the cycle. I don't have the answers, but I'm willing to be part of the conversation. Because like I said, I'm tired of telling the story. Thank you. That was great, you should be on TV. You know that? I always got a couple of questions, I hope you don't mind. Sure. Have you seen anything out there that works? You know, here, here's the deal. Oh, when I talked about that, uh, the young man whose who the most recent picture grandma had was when he was eighth grade, that means there was a disconnect, somewhere between 13 and 17 years old. Somewhere along the way, they lost connection with people who are responsible and who can role model for them. So yes, there are programs even within this community that are working. I mean, you're gonna hear later from Black Achievers and Lynn Johnson. I mean, they're mentoring kids from eighth grade to college. That is working. The, pro the, the issue is getting more of these programs, more vested stakeholders into the community so that these kids don't fall off the radar. And again, I'm speaking on behalf of Gilbert Corsi as a journalist who sees this firsthand, not WDRB News. You've got to be out there talking to children directly. It could be inside the church house, it could be inside the Sunday school. And the real, and just what I see, again, my opinion, it's reaching the kids that need to be reached. We have kids here in here right now, this morning, but are these, and I asked Lynn about this earlier this week, you gotta have conversations with the kids who are banging, 
dealing drugs and may wind up in the alley and they may not be in this room this morning. That's out there on the street. One last question I always like to ask. How long have you been in Louisville? Uh, a little more than three years. By the way, you get married soon? I, well, if you let me get out of here and get to this premarital counseling class, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it getting better or worse in Louisville? What's your opinion? I don't have the depth of knowledge. You have people in this room who have lived in this community their entire lives. I can tell you that I've lived here three years and it's consistent.